So here's your original problem. x to the 6 minus 35x cubed plus 216 equals 0. And you say you understand how we factored this. Here in class, we talked about variable substitution. Because if you recognize that if you take out a cube term from both of these, this is the same exact thing as saying x squared minus 35x plus 216. And then replacing those terms. So the next issue is we can factor this term. So for my factoring tutorial guide on my website, first thing you would do if you're attempting to factor our first piece, x cubed minus 27, is ask yourself, is it a binomial, trinomial, or polynomial with four terms? It's a binomial because you have two terms. So the first question that you ask yourself after that is, is the first term and the last term a perfect square? So here are examples of perfect squares. If we look at our example, you have x cubed. That's not a perfect square. So the answer to that question is no. So the next question is, is the first term a perfect cube, the last term a perfect cube? And here are some examples of perfect cubes. 1, 8, 27. So 1 times 1 times 1, 2 times 2 times 2, 3 times 3 times 3, etc. x cubed. So that's exactly what we have. So this is factoring perfect cubes. So the way we factor this method is it first depends on whether you have an addition sign or a subtracted sign because there are two different formulas. So for this particular problem, you have a subtraction sign. And the way you factor this is you first have to rewrite the problem in terms of perfect cubes. So for us, what do you cube in order to get x cubed? So that means you have to take x and raise that to the third power. Then what do you have to cube in order to get 27. That's 3. So the x represents the a portion. The 3 represents the b portion from your formula. So for there, you just plug those values into the formula. So it's a minus b, whatever the first term is that was cubed, minus b, whatever the second term is that got cubed. Then it's a squared plus ab plus b squared. So for us, in this particular problem, it's going to be x minus 3. Then you take the first term that you have, you square that. You multiply a times b, so we have 3x. And then you square the last term, you have 9. So that's how you factor this first portion, x cubed minus 27. So the next portion that we're dealing with is x cubed minus 8. And we approach our chart the same exact way. Is the binomial? Yes. Is the first term a perfect square? Last term a perfect square? No. Because 8 is not a perfect square. There are no two numbers. You can multiply together to get 8. So the first term is a perfect cube and 8 is a perfect cube. And how does that happen? Well, x is raised to the third power to get x cubed and 2 is raised to the third power to get 8. So when we're factoring this, the same thing applies as before. Your formula for the difference of two cubes is a minus b, a squared plus ab plus b squared. So this one is x minus 2. First term, which is x, you take that and square it, multiply your two terms together, and square the last term. So this gives us the factored form of x cubed minus 8. So in order to solve this problem, we now take each of our factors, set it equal to 0. So we have x minus 3 equals 0. x squared plus 3x plus 9 is equal to 0. We have x minus 2 is equal to 0. And we have x squared plus 2x plus 4 equals 0. So there's your first one. There's your second factor. There's your third factor. So this one's easy. 
add three on both sides. So we have x is equal to three. This one is quadratic and you can't factor it. So what two numbers can you multiply together to get nine, add together to get three? You can't. So use the quadratic formula on this piece. Here, to get x by itself, add two on both sides. So x is equal to two. Here, another quadratic problem. We can't factor it. No two numbers multiply together to give you four. Add together to give you two. So use the quadratic formula on this piece as well.